On this episode of The Electron Show, Dark One finds more gray matter. That's my brain starting back up. Meletius gets to the chopper. Ah, the chopper! Get to the chopper! And Retro gets anatomical. And I'm sorry to be gross, but human skin. Welcome to The Electron Show. The program for the positively charged culture. And now, here is your host, Retro. This is a special Grand Theft Auto episode of The Electron Show. In the Game Lab, we analyze the Grand Theft Auto series from Rockstar Games. Later, in the Conversation Pit, we hear a special report from Meletius on Megacon in Orlando, Florida, and discuss the upcoming MTAC anime convention. In the Tech Lab, Dark One explains his catastrophic computer crash. And our funny folks joining us this week is the real John Travis from sunny California. And in Canada, stand-up comic and radio host, Joe Crawford. This is The Electron Show with Dark One, Meletius, Nissan, and your host, Retro. <laughs> Do you remember when you were a kid playing Nintendo and it wouldn't work? You take the cartridge out, blow on it, and that would magically fix a problem. Every kid in America did that. We just figured it out. Who was it? Somebody adjusting their uh their I mind? did, I was I was I was that's adjusting coming from. Yeah, that's that's Sorry. that's where you that's where it's coming from, so these daggum headphones I have Elf ears, I really do. Like my ears stick up and out like an elf. So, piccolo. yeah, I, I'm serious. I'm like Piccolo. I have his ears, like they're up and out. So, like the part that's supposed to go over is actually resting on the top of my ear. So it will just all of a sudden work its way off, and <laughs> the headset will be sitting on my neck, and I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I can't. I, <laughs> I wish that I wish they had elf ear headsets. For the guy that has the ears just just a little longer than Spock. Yeah, I was about to say you could probably pick up a you know, probably on on the planet Vulcan. You could yeah, probably pick probably up something that'll work for you. Vulcan headsets. I have That's a question. Right. Mister Spock is a Vulcan, right? Right, he's a Vulcan. Yeah. Okay, what planet does he come from? What do, what do they call his planet? Vulcan. Well, yeah, yeah well, that's what they call it. But if he's a Vulcan, wouldn't he be Vulcanian? Yeah. Oh, if he if he's yeah. Vulcan, then he would be from Vulca. Oh wow! I don't know. I, I Good sound, question. I, you know, it's like when when you get down to it, it's it's fascinating. You know, Star Trek, Star Wars. There's a lot of uh, not even sci-fi shows, and they get this cult following, and then people start projecting reality into it, and like its own physics. You know, oh, it has to be this way or whatever. But one of the number one tests to find out if you're a real techno geek is if you watch classic Star Trek and you crack up every time they mention tapes. <laughs> I mean, we, we, it just cracks me up. It's like, you, you know, the computer little... tapes. Well, it looks like a little wedge of cheese and everything, but they refer to them as tapes. God, yes. Dark one, you got to see it. It's very, uh... <laughs> yeah, they got to eat. What do you mean dark one? You mean dark one has to see it. Have you seen any I've... episodes of old uh, Star Trek? I I've seen probably literally all together... 20 minutes my entire life of any Star Trek. Oh, have to fix that. no. Have to fix that. It's like, it's, that's what I'm saying. It's like, uh, you know, well, and I do have to protest at this point because Miletia said old Star Trek. I'm sorry. It's not old Star Trek. It's well, no. classic <laughs> Star Trek. It's not even the original it. series. <laughs> it's classic Star Trek. It's like classic uh, uh, Cola. I lived that whole era where we were uh, anticipating and they said they're going to make a movie and it's like, oh boy, whatever. And when the first Star Trek movie did hit theaters and we went to it, it's like, who is this 
bald woman. It was like the reaction of Star Wars fans when they, they actually came out with the fourth one, which is considered the first one, you know, Phantom Menace. Right. And the reaction uh, that, that real Star Wars fans had to, like, Jar Jar Binks. Uh. And what, it was just, what? <laughs> you know, and they were like, it was almost like finding out there was... N- Oh, I'm going to ruin this for kids all over the world. But they they came out of the theater and they had this. There's no Easter mm-hmm. Bunny. <laughs> it was. <laughs> what happened? You know, <laughs> fascinating my brain captain. is filling some way right now, and I think yeah. I am actually using brain cells. Indeed, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is this cranking in my ear? Oh, I, that's my brain starting back up. I say. <laughs> hey. I think you need to get to the chopper. Ah, the chopper! Get to the chopper! <laughs> Why can't you even find one? Where, where, where did it go? I flipped the oh, car over. <laughs> I knocked the car over, and then I tried to run down the street, and then I saw this guy that looked like Danny DeVito in an in a SUV, and I was like, Hi, hey, Danny, pull the car over. But unfortunately, he just ran me over, and I died. It's quite sad. Hey, this is Zelda. I'm not M right now. Please leave a message. It's not the Blue Fairy thing, is it? I only had to go to the Blue Fairy for an elixir, I'll tell you. Ganon's castle, filled with pig soldiers, they don't play. Had nothing, no romantical situations were arising at that time, so. <laughs> you can subscribe to Electron Magazine for. Free. Keep up with new articles and informative stuff as soon as it happens. To subscribe free, just visit us at www.electronmagazine.com and select the free subscription information to learn how. Hi, this is John from Big Black Delta, and you're listening to The Electron Show. LOL has gone from meaning laugh out loud to I have nothing else to say. And now, it is time to enter Area 52, the Electron Magazine Game Lab. The location is so secret. It is Area 52. It is bad. I... It is Tokis. What are those buildings? Well, I am building, filling in the rest of the house with glass. And you must see this. It's not my fault that you didn't want to play. <laughs> you know the agreement. You know what's going on. I don't have to tell you all the time. <laughs> well, I don't know what's going on. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't get it, Mr. Schwarzenegger. I don't, I don't, well done, not you, but the figure is out, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mayberry, Mr. Ivy, I'll be back, Andy, Mr. Man. <laughs> Mr. Man? Well, I don't want to pick up that sack of potatoes and concrete. <laughs> well, I don't want to go back into the bar, mister. <laughs> <laughs> you got, yeah, you see this? You see what's happened? What? Yep. Yet again, I'm, I'm building, I'm adding to my original home that I built in Minecraft. Oh, yeah? I, yeah, I had an idea, so I'm just filling in stuff. He's inspired. Yeah, he's like Thomas Jefferson. He's never finished building his house. I'm building yeah. Monticello. Minecraft what? Monticello. Yes, what? welcome to my house. Your house looks like a, like a space station. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> If you take the red pill, you stay you stay where you're. I'm not taking any of that mess, and they look like funky jelly beans. Why does it smell like chloroform in here? Somebody better get me out of this place. <laughs> Who decided to have a party here? Yes. Will you stop saying yes? I know you can say something else besides yes. Yeah. I, I, I had a lot of caffeine, man. You said, you said get the caffeine, so I did. I got to it. I got to it. <laughs> 
No, I have to tell you quick. I, I know these uh, German guys, and uh, they have heavy accents. But anyway, they they they've turned into fans of Electron Magazine and the Electron Show. The, and of course, the first episode actually people are starting to find it and enjoy it all over the place. It's kind of interesting. But um, these German guys are like, yeah, he's like this. He's like, yeah, I like this Electron Magazine like a big box of tangled wires. <laughs> it's like that's a good compliment coming from a german but anyway that's pretty awesome yeah so so grand theft auto 4 i have to confess that i really like vice city it's amazing that it's 10 years old yes can you imagine that grand theft auto vice city is over 10 years old anyway so i played a lot of it and of course you get burned out like anybody does on video games but you keep it. And then about a month ago, I pulled it back out, reinstalled it. I've been going back through it. And I think I love Vice City because you have all these little, little small little games and things like the, the maze, you know, with the motorcycle, the remote control cars, the little motocross dirt bike challenge, things right. like that. And I love that because when I do my work, I'm, I'm working all the time. I like to take these little five minute and 10 minute vacations. And those little sub games in there are perfect for that kind of thing. Oh yes. I have not played Grand Theft Auto Four, and you guys have been playing it like crazy here lately. You know, when you're doing your other work and everything, you keep gravitating <laughs> right. toward it. So, what's the appeal with Grand Theft Auto Four? I mean, you have, you've played all of them, right? Yes. Okay. Well, well, Dark One. I mean, what's what's the appeal to you? Um, well, I too have played all of them from the very first one. DOS days, you know. This one has a, you know, a completely redesigned engine and whatnot, but it was super cheap. Uh, under $5 for the complete edition of Grand Theft Auto 4. Yeah, but that's because you downloaded it from uh, Steam? Yes. Yeah. Well, um, I actually got it from Gamefly. They, uh, they were running their sale. Uh, of course, it activates through Steam. Uh, ah, you right. Can it activates buy plenty Steam, of yeah. digital copies from various vendors and have it activated through steam and the person that really got off on it uh well no let me start it again got off on it <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry about that i was having a i was thinking of something else at the moment anyway really but the you won't go into that um <laughs> but the person that really got a great deal was Meletius. And you actually did a nice thing for Miletius because you set him up with Grand Theft Auto, right? Yes. Yes. Well, well explain yes. what you you set him up with, and then how much it was. Uh, well, since I got mine for five dollars, it, it was like four seventy nine after tax. It was insane. I wanted to get Miletius a copy so we could do multiplayer. We're always looking for new multiplayer games for PC. And of course, you've been so, you've been begging you well, like begging, but you've been saying, "Hey, dude, you need to you know, get in there with us and whatever." And then you know, I'm, yes, I'm working on <laughs> yeah. the show and everything. I will do that, I promise. But go ahead. So you got what did you get with the whole package? Went to go back to GameFly to to get that price. That sale was over, so discouraged. I just went looking elsewhere, and Steam themselves were uh, having a Rockstar sale and had the complete Grand Theft Auto collection between Grand Theft Auto 3, Vice City, San Andreas, 4, plus the expansions for 4, oh, yeah. for 10 bucks. 10 bucks. Can't argue that. No. Na, 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 na. <laughs> but I would like to argue this. So you, you, of course, you've had those. You've had them for a few weeks now, and it's like every time I Skype in or anything, you guys are screaming and hollering and flipping cars and all this kind of stuff. You know, <laughs> it's amazing. A bunch of hoodlums. Yeah, but uh, that that, that brings me to my next question, which I think is very interesting: is downloading software or downloading media compared to the real thing well the real thing it is the real thing it's just the delivery method but isn't it comforting to have a nice box and a disc and a manual and whatever and pay sixty dollars well well yes i mean you know having a physical copy yeah i mean is is a couple of things number one for those who are hardcore gamers or even collectors it's kind of like like you know it adds to your collection and you know being able to see a physical copy when someone's showing you know showing you that what they have is nice too um 
And also, you know, just in case if something does happen, you know, you, you can always have a disc so you can, you know, reload it or whatever that you need to do. Well, let me jump in there. Uh, doesn't most of the uh, Gamefly or Steam or what have you give you some kind of serial number that if something does happen, you can recover a copy? Well, yes. I mean, they do, and the, you, you do get that. That's part of it. Um, but it's not do, like uh, you, you can't go back four years later and say, oh, I remember well, that game. I'd I, like to get another copy of it. I don't think that would happen. That, that doesn't, you know, for that not, price. No. <laughs> yeah. It's not like me. It's like I, I went searching. Like, I've got Grand Theft Auto Vice City around here somewhere, and it took me a few hours to kind of dig around, but there it was, and, <laughs> and I loaded it, and everything was great. What is the best... Meletius, in your opinion, and then Dark One, in your opinion, as far as, you know, Rockstar Games, the the whole Grand Theft Auto franchise, I guess is the word that you would call it. it sounds like I'm eating, you know, cheap hamburgers. But anyway, when I say franchise, <laughs> but out of all the games they've come up with, what is the best one? Oh, and when um, I when I say the best one, you, you you have to understand that I don't necessarily mean the best because of course the latest one's going to have the best graphics and the best you know technology built in and coding and everything, but just right. what's the best out of all that series? What's the best one? Like let's let's say someone has never played Grand Theft Auto, and they say I want to I want to try it out. Which one would you suggest? I know what I would suggest. I would say Vice City. Right. But that's because I, I have not played four. And I've played True. San Andreas. I've played all the others. But I've never played four. That I'm sure that's going to change in the future. You'll have me in there flipping cars and shooting. You'll, <laughs> yes. you'll be throwing grenades at me. Yeah, I know. The whole reason why you want me to come in there and play is so you'll have somebody new to throw grenades at. I know exactly <laughs> what. Right. I know your mentality. Yes. Yeah. But, well, grenades, but anyway, grenades but the fun. question is, what? You know, somebody's never played Grand Theft Auto at all. They've they've been on a desert island. You know, they're Rip Van Winkle and they just woke up, and they want to try this Grand Theft Auto. What was what's the best one as just overall? I would say three. Was really, that surprises yes, me because uh, um, three took number one. The story was really good, and also mm -hmm. another thing too the uh, the main character could not talk. Ah, and, right. And, yeah. He, it was interesting right, to see remember, all these yeah. elements of things going on, but he never said a word. <laughs> you know, I will admit that in Vice City, I wish they would shut the sometimes. Right. Yeah. I, I, I skipped those. I hit the space bar. You know, skip, skip. Uh, right. You have to listen to it the first time just to know what the heck's going on. But it's like, but ah, get on with it. One of, the, on. one of the main reasons why I would say three was, was probably the best, in my opinion, was... Uh, one of the weapons, the original M16 in that game, was they have not in any other Grand Theft Auto game made a assault rifle that powerful. Yeah, it was a little brutal. Yeah. It made no sense. Like, yeah. that gun hissed. It was like... <laughs> right, and I, yeah. That was it. You you were done, and four cars behind you just blow up. Wow. I mean, yeah, exactly. armored yeah. trucks would go up in like three or four shots. It was ridiculous. Crud. Now I've got to go <laughs> dig that thing out. I don't know where the heck I've got it. i got to dig it out now. Uh. When did that come out? Three came out. It was still the 20th century. It was uh, around 2000, I think, 2003 or 2004. No, no, no. See, Vice City came. Oh, wait a minute. I thought three came out before Vice City. It came up after it? Because Vice City came out like 2002, actually. If I'm not mistaken. The year that Grand Theft Auto 3 came out. I think it was like 2000. 2001. Was it 2000? If I'm not mistaken, Grand Theft Auto 3 was 2001 and Vice City was 2003 or 4. Yeah, I believe it was yeah. 4. Yeah, it might have been 4. Wow. Yeah, because I think it has been exactly almost 10 years, the Vice City, but everything. But uh, yeah, see see what happens, Meletius, when you, when you, when you drink too much caffeine. <laughs> and and you've got all those that that huge game collection and you don't know yes. you know you don't know if you're coming or going right <laughs> you know and you refuse to go through the 10 step program she was <laughs> sir you have a problem i don't have a problem <laughs> <laughs> anyway that's no we need to stay away this is a supposed to be for all ages this is E. Well, it's not. Uh, the Electron Show is not exactly E for everyone, but we do try to 
stay on the sort of on the straight and narrow. So uh, straight but not narrow. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we we try. <laughs> we give we give a we give a good attempt. <laughs> we try. That doesn't mean. You know, we have to. That just means we try. Okay. We try. Okay. Well, well, dark one. Let me let me jump over there. So, w- what's your opinion? And everything. Please don't agree with Meletius. I know Meletius is right, like ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time. <laughs> but that doesn't mean you have to agree with him. Watch this. He's going to agree with him. Um, <laughs> I try. I. I'm just trying. Actually, guys. I'm actually, just trying. this time I I can agree with both of you. Uh, Vice City was the game that I played the most out of any of them. That you did. But number two would be Grand Theft Auto 3. Just because yeah. both I had agree. their modding community, it, it was so expansive. The gameplay, I mean, you could finish the game and go right back to playing. Oh, repeat You're that. You just, you fell out. Skype, wait a minute, Skype screwed up or something whatever you can you can play <laughs> it and go right back to what well back that's what, what you get for for choosing to live in this remote cabin in bfe tennessee with your with your console collection <laughs> that am true <laughs> at least you're edumacated and that's a whole other that's, that's <laughs> I, a I am edumacated, edumacated yeah degree degree yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's like Latin, ain't it? Anyway, I see I'm knocking you off track there or anything. But it's interesting you say that. But I love Vice City. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm originally from Florida. I don't know. I really love it. And it's not because of the story. It's because of the play. It's because you can get outside of the story. And this is what I did is I've got game saves of all these different places, you know, so I can, gee, I want to do the little remote control cars on the beach you know, take a break and do that. And I can just, you know, load that save point, play that. Or I, my favorite, I, I'm not into the helicopter thing. Now, oh, I remember a discussion that I had with Miletius about the, the, there is one part of Vice City I have never, ever been able to get through. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't think Miletius did either. It's that construction guy and you have oh, to God, take those yeah. little you ha- it's like a it's like a uh, position a or something you have to take these little remote control helicopters these little toy helicopters and pick up you know, dynamite or something and fly into a building and drop them on these you know burning barrels or something or barrels and blow the building up i have never gotten through that and it frustrates the absolute you know what out of me have you ever gotten through it no well, no. I feel better now. Yeah, really? I, yes. I, uh, oh, no. Look, don't tell I, me. I, don't I tell have. me Dark One. Oh, Dark One. Of course you have. Yeah, you, oh, God. Mr. Mr. I found out a, a, a scientific theory. Okay, what's 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 <laughs> the, the trick the then? Mods. <laughs> no, you probably just you just destroyed it. <laughs> no, what's the what's the trick? I mean, there's got to be yes, a please. there's got to be a trick, and of course he's going to say dedication and. <laughs> you know, a, sad, and a strong breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly enough, that's the truth. It just takes time. You got to completely understand the physics of the helicopter. Now, I'll tell you one no, that I did. No, it's complete bull crap. It's that protein powder that you drink. I know what it Probably. is. It's not freaking dedication I, I am genetically or whatever. modified at this point. Yes, you are a bit more dedicated. That's probably what Meletius. That's got to be what it's it flattering. is. Yeah, because we don't have the patience the for that. <laughs> I have grit, but sometimes I'm just like, man, forget this. <laughs> there, <laughs> there is one. This, this is my problem with it. I have gotten within seconds of beating it so many times. Yes. So many times. And I drop the thing, and I'm like, yes. And it's like, you didn't drop it in the right place. I'm like, yes, I did. I was right over the top of it. It's like the, You're a it's, liar! the software is taunting me. Yes. It taunts you. Does it do that? That, that is Rockstar yes, for you. Yes. Yeah, well, okay. Well, what's Rockstar? Where, let me look up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use Bing and look up their uh, phone number and call them, complain. What's the <laughs> CEO's name? I'm going to file a complaint. Over a, a, game file a complaint. I, I, I've been know, playing the on. daggone thing for 10 years, and I haven't beat that one part. <laughs> but, well, a caveat is at least... It allows you to, it, you basically can finish the game without that finishing that is what I'm saying. So it's not like, you know, different areas. You can, you can, 
you know, you can you can achieve other areas and you can go through the game and finish it and everything and leave that hanging there. But it drives me crazy because it's sitting there. It's taunting me on the map. It's sitting there going, <laughs> you didn't complete me. I'm here. I'm not going to let you forget it. I'm like, no. <laughs> and that. Come on. You know you want to play me. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> It is so yeah, far. Oh, that's right. Ready man. to fail. I can't beat it. <laughs> I have right. lost I sleep over that. No. <laughs> I've lost freaking <laughs> sleep over that thing. You, don't, you have no idea. Ten years. Ten years of my freaking life I've tried to beat it and I can't beat it. Okay. What's the secret? Oh, dark one, enlighten us. Well, yes. That's You're becoming a buzzword. A That's becoming like a buzz phrase, like, you know, like John Belushi <laughs> saying, excuse me. It's like, oh, dark one, enlighten us. <laughs> Go ahead, man. You're asking me to answer a question pertaining to a game that I probably have not played since 2006. I don't give a crap. I want to know how to beat it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. What I was going to offer is some comforting words that, that there is All something right. very similar to that mission on San Andreas. Now, what? you people won't believe this, but I didn't play San Andreas until last year for the first time. Oh, wow. Yeah. So my patience has worn thin between 2004 and 2013. All right. I don't have the patience for the dedication and... Wow. San Andreas has a mission with a little RC helicopter that I can't beat, and I, I'll i be honest, oh, I put I the game down. I put oh. the game down for good after that. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. I just completely, yeah. when I encountered that, I just, just nope, I'm not even going <laughs> to. Just, here, no, here, no, no, I'm not even going to. They've always got to have that one, that one <laughs> mission. Yes. And you want to pull your hair out and do like... Retro just tried to do and file a complaint with Rockstar. Wait a minute, I just had a I just had a moment of enlightenment. I think they do that on purpose. You know what? I bet you they do. I they bet do. Rockstar does that. I bet they've had office parties where they laugh and they go, I can't wait till these guys try this. Because uh -huh. if you, if it frustrated you, Dark One, and I know your devotion, and I you know, you don't I don't like things beating me up. But you definitely don't like things beating you up. If it frustrated you, <laughs> I'm not even going there. I'll never go there. It's got to be something. <laughs> no. But no, no, I did encounter it. I said, no, I'm not going. Oh, helicopters? No, sorry. I'm out of here. I'm going. I'm doing the rest of the game. Forget it. I didn't even try. But Vice I City, I at least I tried, and I came very close and everything. So maybe there is. Maybe it's, maybe, maybe it's a company joke. With Rockstar Games. I wouldn't it, doubt that. It's a I big really joke on everybody. If we have frustrations with it, then only people that are that dedicated are going to pass that mission. And they are entitled to brag about it. Man, I'm in awe. I'm totally awestruck. You're a cool guy. <laughs> You're a cool dude, man. I'll never question your, you know, you know, anything that you say. You know, you might say, you know, in the future, if you say, hey... You know, you could beat that level if you uh, attach chains to the ceiling and hang upside down. I, I would do it. I would. I would do it because you said so. That's that's how confident I am with you. <laughs> to see <laughs> if you will actually commit yourself to that thought. I'm not going to hang myself from the ceiling from chains. I'm sorry. I was that was an, that was that was an would. analogy. That was a what are you? <laughs> not a metaphor. What is that? Uh, anyway, no. I was just. It was an example. It was just an example. So now we have to vote on Grand Theft Auto. Just let let, let let's refer to it and let's do the pro, the protons and the neutrons. And hopefully everybody knows our rating system now. We have a positive and a negative. One to five. As a whole, the whole franchise. Here I go eating a hamburger again, you know, a cheap hamburger. But from the from all the different versions, what would you rate as far as the protrons, the positives, one to five? Let's start with dark one. Oh, yeah, I know it's a hard one because we're doing a whole <laughs> yeah, yeah. franchise and I, everything. You're but just, telling me to recollect like 20 years of... Well, just the whole impression, you know, uh, now we're talking the protons, one to five. You know, one being the least, five being the most. What is it? 
Mm. <laughs> well, <laughs> out of that. Yeah, I really pulled a big one on. Oh man, yeah, uh, yeah, you did. That's well, amazing. Just, don't. That's almost a catch twenty-two, man. I, yeah. I give it. I give it a four. All right. Uh, explanation. Okay. Explanation being, uh, out of the entire series, they have defined a genre in its own. There have been plenty of yeah. copycats, mm -hmm. but they do it right. Even right. through yeah. all the glitches, the issues, the connectivity problems, everything, mm -hmm. they've mastered it. Yep, I would agree. Yeah, that's, yeah. So, Miletius, <laughs> the oh, ball man. comes to your court. The ball's in your court. Uh, Don't wimp out and agree with Dark One. I, I want to say three and a half. And the reason why, the reason why, okay. Because it's not four. Yeah, the reason why I was about to say it's not <laughs> four, and I don't want to sound like I'm following. No, it. no, you were saying you were saying in a hole. You know, you were saying in a yeah. hole. No, no, I was um, saying as a hole, not in a hole. Yeah. Oh, as a hole. <laughs> well, yeah, I. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There we go. Um, in a hole, I, I would I would definitely say about three. <laughs> Miletius wants to stay as, in a hole, not as a hole. Uh, as he a, wants to I stay in a hole. What is what's a, <laughs> Never mind. We, uh, Minecraft brain. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Hand grenades. Um, so what what took a, away that that half a point then from four to? I, I've I've played all of them. I've played you know one all the way to to basically you know the expansions on Grand Theft Auto Four. All of them have really good aspects to them. They're all really fun in their in their own right. One thing though is that I'm I'm waiting to make uh, waiting to see what five is like since it has not came out on PC yet. So going to be quite quite an experience in itself. Yeah, once you but, go uh, PC, you never want to go back. I can yeah, it's that's the truth. Yeah. And I but say yeah, that as I mean, somebody that still plays an original Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, but, uh, just, yeah. I mean, they they have a lot of strong points. Sometimes the story, they've had tendencies in the past um, to overlook certain things just because of the fact that they they want to get the game out, which is cool. They have a lot of uh, interesting glitches. They actually make the game kind of fun. Some glitches. of the glitches are fun, but they have the reason why I'm not a four is because they have some unnecessary ones. Like I, I don't I don't talk much about Vice City because I, <laughs> I ran into a lot of problems. Partially because I have the curse of being able to find a glitch every time I touch a game. <laughs> yeah, and, glitch my shit. And, yeah. and we're talking about yeah, so uh but that's the reason why I would give it give it a uh Three and a half. All right. Well, now let's talk about neutrons, which are the negatives. One being not as negative, five being the most negative, so we can figure out a overall score. And, of course, I don't vote because I'm – what am I, the referee? Anyway, to make it fair, let's start with Dark One. What are the negatives? How many neutrons would you give that entire Grand Theft Auto franchise? And, again, Dark Silence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> make me think. I, I, I am slow with How the thing. How dare you make me think? Yeah, I um, to no. <laughs> I hate doing halves. I really do hate doing halves. But I'd have to say two and a half. Two and a half. Wow. Not three, because I can see a sense of them trying, but not two, because come on, you could have tried harder. Yeah. <laughs> no. See, I I would agree um, with that. <laughs> this this falls under what we were talking about last week with the not polishing things. Yeah. Yeah. You you played through the entire game as you programmed it. Yeah. Huge corporation, a huge developer. Why is it made to where you cannot even finish like an installation? <laughs> on GTA 4 for PC, oh, why God, would you yes. bother porting from a different console to PC when we all know fanboys, not fanboys, PC is superior? Reach on, brother, pass the offering plate and say amen. <laughs> <laughs> what, why, why would you bother? Uh -huh. Why would you pull it off a, a development kit that's based off a of PC in the first place back to PC? Make it for PC. Yes! <laughs> Who cares if the big X sells better than anything else? 
if that were the case, who who cares? Yeah. Well, well wait a minute. I gotta, I gotta I gotta I gotta wind my clock because I have a feeling we're gonna be here for a while. <laughs> 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 I'll wrap this up. I'll wrap this up. In a nutshell, yeah. you've got enough money. I mean, look at the sales from GTA 5 alone. You're still messing that up. Seriously, get it together. You've yeah, got the funding. It, yeah, I agree with you. You know, um, I agree with you to a, to a point because I think that's also what makes – the whole Grand Theft Auto thing fun is just the Ironically, goofy stuff. That is its charm. You know, as I go in the I go in the boathouse, you know, to, to save and there's this this cop he keeps he's running into the wall. He's trying to chase a guy through the wall. He's like, you know, Barney fight and he just keeps bumping into the wall, doing this weird dance, you know, because he, he's too stupid to go out and go around. And it just things like that just I, I could just sit there and watch him for five or ten minutes do that. <laughs> just <laughs> blah, 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 you know, random Our like Grand fights. And... Four, you still got, you've got hints of their old engine still kind of floating around in their revisions, mm -hmm. like uh, car suspension being messed up because the the detection to the uh, the road hasn't been registered completely until you <laughs> yes. drop up on the vehicle. So it looks like it's got like hydraulics or something. You've got cars coming out of the ground. Oh, my God. Oh, Andrews, oh that's so what I like. Yeah. Vice City is great because I like driving over the bridges, and there'll be like a, a car embedded into the bridge. And Miletius, I think you've encountered this because I think we've talked about this where, you know, you're booking, you're in a Lamborghini, and you're booking oh, down yeah. the road, and suddenly you hit you hit something, a piece of something, and just go oh, no, flipping. Just, just, just yeah, like a hunk you, um, of something left over, but you can't <laughs> see it, and it's like I don't know. I do blam, and it's like I'm doing. I do three endos in the air right. and come out smash. You know, it's like what did I hit? Basically, you hit um what's what's considered an invisible wall. It's like it a hunk of curb between, or something. I hit a hunk yeah, it's, of concrete it's a, it's or whatever. A glitch. I yeah. mean, it's a glitch. You just hit that, and <laughs> it'll, it'll take you in the air. It'll pull doors <laughs> off. Yeah, <laughs> just crazy stuff. Hey. And you have encountered Super Cop. Yes, in Vice City. When you get, yeah. Um, basically, if you're playing the game long enough, probably about 20 or 30 minutes or so, and uh, you are get about, you know, four-star warning, like a cop yeah. warning, yeah. and uh, you try to get away, if you can stay away from the cops long enough, the game will glitch, and, you know, this cop will, will just appear out of nowhere and just grab the door and open open the door and pull you out and bust you. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, but you had it. <laughs> but you have to explain the helicopter thing. You had one. You were, yeah, you were way up in the air in the helicopter. I got into a helicopter, took off. You know, I was, I was like, yeah, they can't stop me, and you know, I was just trying to get away. And um, as soon as as soon as I did, um, I saw this little like brown spot, and I'm like, what is that? And then next thing you know, he pulled me out of the helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> and he had his gun pointed at me. It was like busted, and then the helicopter fell on top of me, exploded, and then, and then I was in the hospital. I'm like, what? What just happened? <laughs> well, anyway, the, the bottom line now, you didn't do your neutrons. So, Miletius, one to five. Well, one being not as bad, five being the worst. What would you give it? I'd give it a two. Based on? They have issues that, that have been going on for long enough, you know, from previous. Uh, previous games and previous problems and you know the glitches some of them are okay but you know some of the other stuff like especially for pc i mean you know just just try to try to fix that the they install, fix that in install yeah, just stuff install, install issues yeah, just yeah. install and connect and in, connect into online play if they yeah. can just fix that then yeah it would be fine so the bottom line is and people can email us about this grand theft auto had a lot of people freaking out you know the do-gooders and everything that video games are just too violent the bottom line is i'd like to say this is that video games are kind of an outlet and i actually think that video games violent as some of them are and i actually think some of them are a little too violent i i would agree however i do like the rating system and everything but Video games give the opportunity to let steam off so people don't do it in public. This is Mystery 
and you are listening to the electron show american author ein rand once said every man is free to rise as far as he's able or willing but the degree to which he thinks determines the degree to which he will rise The letters T and G are very close to each other on a keyboard. This recently became all too apparent to me, and consequently I will never be ending a work email with the phrase, Regards, again. And now, another episode of Sparkle Girl. Okay, so I was playing this Ocarina of Time game, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, and so apparently you have to go to this place called the Temple of Time, and then you play the Ocarina of Time to open the Door of Time, to go to the Pedestal of Time where the Sword of Time is to become the Hero of Time, to go and sleep somewhere in the Temple of Time for seven years, and then you like wake up and you're like sexy, and then you're like, oh yeah, I'm 19, and then you're the Hero of Time, and then you go Tune back Tune in again time next time for another episode of Sparkle Girl. And I just got really tired. Do you know something cool that we should know about? Is there something we forgot to talk about? Let us know. Contact us at www.electronmagazine.com But it looks weird from the outside. They were trained by Dr. Spock. And now, it is time to enter Area 42, the Electron Magazine Tech Shop. You had a very interesting computer crash. Indeed I did. Yeah, well, and, and, and I just have to mention that, of course, uh, Miletius wasn't any help. He's the court jester, so he's, like, prodding <laughs> at you. Of course, he's known you for a long time, so he can do that. And, of course, we really felt for you because you were uh, – that's your main computer. That's your gaming computer. That's what you do all your work with. You woke up one morning. It was dead. I mean, what happened? It, it went through post. It went to boot into Windows, and at the uh, the Windows loading screen, I don't know what happened. It, it kind of just went into uh, – it wasn't a blue screen of death. It was more like a, a BIOS-based error said that I had a, uh, a, a corrupted file, and I researched the file. Turns out the file had something to do with a video game that I have installed – had installed on my hard drive – and, you know, of course, that, that doesn't really add up. Why would a fall from a video game lead to computer failure? Well, you would be surprised. So, uh, in the day, actually, there were disks that came, utility disks, driver disks, actually came with hardware that actually had some malicious code put on it. But that was back in the day. But, uh, yeah, you'd be surprised where, the, where this stuff comes mm. from. Yeah. I guess that could be as simple as a programming error on their part, right? Not intentional even. No, they were intentional. Yeah, I, you know, back in the day it was the it was the wild west in the end <laughs> of the 20th century on the internet. It it was. It was the wild west and you had, you know, good old cowboys and Indians and pioneers, you know, getting arrows in the back and all that kind of stuff. Of course, now I personally think that the internet is in its adolescence. It's definitely not into it in its infancy anymore. There are areas that are still pretty savage, but um, but anyway, I, I digress. So that seemed to be what was going on. But then uh, when you corrected things and it came up, you had a catastrophic uh, failure on your hands. Oh yeah, this this was an absolute mess, a, a train wreck to say the least. Yeah, I ruled it out as being maybe hard drive failure. Uh, since it's just not booting up, uh, I ran a Windows startup repair utility, still did not fix it. I ran uh, System Restore, still didn't fix it. I ran um, OS Repair, 
still didn't fix it. Some in, of these in tests, other words, yeah, but another just to, in a nutshell, you went A to Z and you were you were completely confused because oh, I yeah. yeah, for a couple of days there, you know, we we all were getting together. You absolutely I mean you were you were connecting through your phone, through uh your notebook computer. <laughs> so you had everything like jury rigged so you could at least communicate with us and it was it was quite harrowing and everything but then you open up your machine and what did you find hardware wise everything was caked in dust ah and and you know where most dust comes from in in the household my and, and let me i can say that i've been there and done that because i opened up machines and just had it caked with dust you don't really think about it the very nature of uh, negative ions, which are which are generated by electronic equipment, attract dust. Most of it, I thought, not all of it, is, and I'm sorry to be gross, but human skin. We actually shed skin, and the ironic part is, people that shower the most, like every day, shed more skin, and so you're going to have a bigger dust problem. Am I being gross? <laughs> not not gross, but uh, crazy to think that. You know, the cleaner you are, the the more you're going to shed. Well, it's true. It's scientifically true. And so, we, yeah, we're shedding skin all the time. You know, for unfortunately, we don't do it like snakes. You know, we just get it all <laughs> over with at one yeah. time. But uh, so it, it turns into microparticles, of course. And then anything electronic, you know, television, stereos, you know, computers, attract it because of the negative ions that are generated. Anyway, uh, not that I want to digress so much. So... Yeah, it'll it'll flow. It'll get inside your machine, and it'll cake things in there, and it will it will cause electricity to arc. It will, you know, and it'll it will fry a motherboard. So that could have been your problem. Do you think that might have been what happened? Honestly, that's the best conclusion I could come to. I mean, nothing else changed except for uh, that piling up dust. Yeah, well, probably it could have fried the uh, the hard drive controller, so your controller could have fried. So, you know, all your CPU and everything's working and your RAM's working and everything. It just couldn't get from point A to point B and back again. I can understand that, the, the hard drive controller, because there was also a casualty aside from the motherboard. That was one hard drive. I have three and one died. Hmm. Ironically enough, the hard drive that had my backup on it. <sighs> everything else was spared. So I remember you ordered a, a, a motherboard to replace it, and what happened? And you replaced it, right? And then what happened? Uh, I just had to, of course, uh, start from the beginning, use a, a different hard drive because it, it did corrupt the original OS installation. So I just installed Windows on a storage drive, and from there, just you know, rebuilt the system. Aside from that, it was pretty much smooth. Yeah, but you started talking about you were going to get rid of those hard drives. You were you were going to get solid state hard drives. Oh man, that that was definitely an act of passion. I I did consider it for about twenty four hours, and then considered the price and <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and also you use the word passion. I, I would, and probably Miletius would agree that, yes, there was few days there that the best word to describe it would be passion. <laughs> you were very passionate. <laughs> <laughs> we felt for you. I mean, really. I mean, it just, it was painful. Yeah. The good thing is, is you were inspired to write a really good article that's on Electron Magazine that details you reinitializing uh, your your game stuff and and your installations from Steam. So that that's one good thing. At least when something bad happens, we learn. I mean, did you? What did you learn from this experience? I learned quite a bit, honestly. Uh, it was my first time putting a CPU back on a new motherboard, and I thought it was going to be extremely scary. And it honestly wasn't that bad as long as you're paying attention. It's pretty simple. Uh, I learned that thermal paste can get out of hand very quickly. I learned that thermal paste and dust are not a good mix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did learn how to uh, move those uh, those game installations from my old hard drive to the new one with little to no headache. But let's say something about the dust problem. It's a good idea on a regular basis, not every week or whatever, uh, I run HEPA filters uh, in my office 
uh, really nice ones, uh, Honeywell ones, and uh, the you know cleaning the air and what have you. Not only is it better, you know, breathing. You're not breathing all this stuff, but it's also better for your equipment. And of course, I learned that from working in extremely high end recording studios, where dust, smoke, something that can really mess you up, and you have to mm-hmm. be extremely clean. Computers are have become well. Televisions, when they first came out in the 40s and 1950s and everything, were very technical contraptions, and you had TV repair guys that would come and, you know, tubes and all this kind of stuff. And then they became extremely, um, well, disposable, basically. Computers have gotten that way. I was doing a lot of bench work uh, back in the day, and I would actually run bus wire and redesign circuit boards and and did component level repair actually not board level that's long gone that was a great experience and that's long gone and computers have pretty much become almost appliances to make the thing last a while you really need to pay a guy to clean it out real good or learn to clean it yourself open up the cabinet uh but anyway so Keep it clean, guys. Dust happens, and pop that baby open and get in there. Which leads me to talk about basic preventive maintenance. Now, speaking of hard drives, uh, do you have a regime that you go through, just some basic maintenance or maybe defragmentation? Do you automate that, or what do you do? I used to automate backups, uh, and back in the Windows 98 days, I did do defragmentation. Now, not so much. NTFS doesn't require it like uh, FAT and FAT32 does. Yeah, it's it's not as effective. It does help a little, but I've had bad experiences with defragmenting PCs. For the amount of money that good big hard drives cost these days, just get a, a hard drive with a USB cable. You know, a, a nice big fat hard drive, and for the amount of money that you would pay these services. In a year, just get an extra hard drive, hang it on uh, a USB port, and get in the habit of just dragging and dropping data. You know, when you work on stuff, myself being a media producer, I want to make sure that I save stuff on a regular basis because it's my work, and I have had some horrifying moments. And when you're dealing with technology, even the most savvy people will have these moments of sheer terror In fact, you experienced me having a moment of sheer terror uh, last week. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And I happen to have the recorder going. Of course, that'll never see the light of day, but I will keep that audio for myself just to show myself what I sound like during that (laughs) so I can become a better person. (laughs) The bottom line of this whole lesson and what we've been talking about is... uh, Get rid of the dust, and also be patient. You can't do that under pressure. Yo, give me something to dance to. Yeah, boy. Oh, I got a Snapchat. I better snap back. Okay, let's see. Um, snap. Half twice, full, clear. Snap! What the heck? Snap! It won't snap! It won't snap! It's not working. Snapping. Snapping the phone in half. Still not working. How do I snap back? I freaking hate you, Snapchat! Extraordinary! <laughs> not working. This is the Electron Show. Contact us at www.electronmagazine.com. Snapping. If Carmen San Diego and Waldo ever got together, their offspring would probably just be completely invisible. It is time to enter Area 11, the Conversation Pit. 
uh, the most difficult thing I've ever tried to do is to clear the mind. Hello, my yes. honey. Hello, my baby. Hello, my Hello, ragtime girl. Hello, my ragtime girl. <laughs> <laughs> so have you covered... Come on, Charlie. you got to get up and dance, okay? <laughs> have you yeah, recovered she? from... Uh, hey, have you recovered from getting hit in the face with a tree limb? <laughs> Clearly not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you still sound a little... Like your nose is a little flat. Yeah, it... Uh, being as tall as I am, I've kind of gotten used to that happening, but <laughs> the amount... The amount of pollen, it was like it was like a tree ninja. It was like I'm gonna blow dust in his face. Boom! <laughs> 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 yeah, it was all over the place. Barely, you know, it smacked me in the head. Pollen all in the in my face. A little gas grenade went off, and <laughs> yeah, this is the end result. You're hearing it. So, well, no, you sound a lot <laughs> better than last night when it actually happened. Yeah, last night I was all like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you sounded like Marlon Brando. <laughs> <laughs> with a with a flat nose, young no, girl. No. You must travel no, 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 no. <laughs> All right, we all have to have a snack. Any ideas out there? I shared my dark one. Do you have anything? I I do have a favorite midnight snack. It's banana, peanut butter, and a wheat wrap. Wow. That is it. You you mm. lay out the wheat wrap. You put a banana on it. You put peanut butter on it. Wrap it up. Hey, it's pretty good with honey. Wow. That sounds good. So it's kind of healthy. <laughs> Simple. It sounds like uh, something Elvis Presley used to eat, but I think he sla- he, he'd make nanner sandwiches and peanut butter, but I think he put a layer of mayonnaise on it. Of course, he's from Memphis, you know. So, <laughs> so this so is like terrible. So this is like, um, <laughs> it. oh, I know what you could call it, the healthy Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Indeed. It's, it's the healthy That's Elvis. That's a good name. Hey, there you go. I'm going to have one of them nanner, nanner sandwiches. Thank you, thank you. Oh, healthy Elvis. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, so you just get you get like a whole wheat wrap. Let's let's go over there because it was like really simple. Most of our stuff is, uh, and Miletius and I, we're like, okay, do this, do that, do that. 30 minutes later, <laughs> we're finally finishing up. But yours is very simple. So, so you take a wrap, like a whole wheat wrap. Yes. All right, and then you lay a banana on there. Can yes. I, can I assume that, that we're supposed to peel the banana? Let's let's hope it's peeled first. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's some of our listeners would just throw the banana on there, you know. So we have this to... is going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know how that turns out, folks. Good. <laughs> yeah, I can see, you know, in the in the paper, roommate killed by flying banana. He's like he took a bite in it, you know, didn't uh, didn't unwrap it, and it shoots out one side because it was lubricated by the honey. Funeral <laughs> hits the guy in the left eyeball and. George, George. See, that is exactly why the honey is optional. It can be dangerous. Oh, okay. Honey can be dangerous, I guess. Yeah, yeah. honey can be dangerous, depending on how you apply it. Um, so you, okay, you slap, well, I would I would slap the peanut butter on, you know, on the, on the whole wheat wrap, and then you lay the peeled banana on there, and then trickle a bead of uh, honey across there, wrap it up, and that's it? Yeah. Okay, now what I would do is I would heat up a cast iron pan. And uh, with a oh God, here we go. touch of oil mm, and, <laughs> and lay that sucker in there like just one minute on one side, you know, and then one minute on one side and then take it out. Yeah. And then it'd be have a little. Hey, that gives me an idea for an experiment. <laughs> Taking a plantain and huh? frying it up. Yes. I've taken regular, you know, everyday bananas and I'll actually cut them up into uh, little wheels, you know, cut them up like that and fry them. And it may, and oh, okay. it's, it's absolutely, it intensifies the banana and everything. And it just, it's really good. And just, just that in, in a bowl and whatever. And I have, I have uh, amazed many a female with, with that treat. Note to self. <laughs> Cha-ching. <laughs> okay, hold on. I can, I can see. What, you, know, you know, guys, what we could do, most people listen to the show and they go, this is a great show. But what they don't hear is, you know, that's only about 10, 15, maybe, maybe 20% of the time that we're together analyzing, working together and everything. So if people heard what we really talked about, I think we should start a program about relationships, but <laughs> actually it'd probably be dangerous. <laughs> Merely scholastic exercises. No, oh no, can't do that. We build a phony philosophy out of fast cars, hi-fi. 
<laughs> I have to explain to the to the listeners that we have this secret facility, the Electron Magazine secret facility hideout clubhouse boys club, basically. But we do allow girls in. That's another whole story. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we have other locations, like we have the secret Florida location, which is where Malikius uh -huh. is now. And um, of course, we remind me, we have to talk about the big convention down there, but I'm just kind of reminding right. you so we can get to it and not ramble off somewhere and digress. But um, Dark One uh, likes to hang out in our secret vacation facility, which is where I like to describe as BFE Tennessee. Indeed. <laughs> that's where, that's where he likes to hang out. Dab, middle of nowhere. Yeah, and, and the reason why is because that's the only place we allow him to keep his retro video game collection, console collection, because it's so massive. It's one of the largest in the world, and it's so massive that... Uh, that our secret cabin location is the only place that, you know, we can keep it. So, <laughs> That'll yeah. house it without, you know, ticking off our significant others. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I saw. What I want to know about is, Meletius, you mm -hmm. were in town and the big convention was on. Ah, yes, yes. Megacon is basically one of the largest anime, uh, comic book, sci-fi conventions and basically the south the one rumor i heard was stan lee was supposed to be there and then didn't show up yeah he yeah he wasn't there he, he didn't show which was very disappointing i mean he's but, very uh, healthy he's he's been very very healthy and and good looking for a man of his age it, it just it just conjures up concerns but, yeah, that, but that's all was, rumor let's not talk about that or whatever just just talk about the convention what are, what are some of the juicy things you there were comic book men there yes um actually three uh three of the guys from uh, the comic men show were there i didn't i didn't realize that they were actually going to be there um and also the uh walking dead <sighs> most of the cast was there too oh, oh really uh, there well, that's your favorite of, show that's like yeah there there was a yeah. that's the only reason why you wear a watch Am I am I yeah. right? It's for Walking <laughs> yes. Dead. That you only wear a watch because of that, and you've got the alarm set for once a week. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> I'm one of the fans. So I love the show. And um, oh yeah, there was a lot of really interesting costumes too. A lot of people put a lot of creativity into their uh, cosplay outfits, which was nice to see. So, but I have yeah, a question: was... Did they also consider the uh, human elements? Ah, uh, well, one one guy didn't. He he, <laughs> he kind of <laughs> forgot about that. Yeah, it's, it's it's nice to nice to dress up like a mech until, until you have to go pee. <laughs> then, yeah, you, then yeah, it's, it's a problem. Yeah, mechs have to have trap doors. You know, yep, definitely. Yep. So yikes. That that is one thing. Know your cosplay costume before you go to a convention. <laughs> of course, a real convenient excuse for that is like, "Hey, I'm a mech. I'm just leaking coolant." Yeah, until yeah. until you until you start to smell like <laughs> you're like, "Hey, man, don't worry about that. It's cool." And yeah, your coolant's bad, buddy. <laughs> what, what, what's going on? Wait a minute, that was a Futurama episode where they go to the the robot planet where they want to kill all humans, and he's like, "That's right. You seem to be leaking coolant. Here, let me. I got some hot resin right here. I could slap on it. Oh, it's okay." <laughs> <laughs> so it was a big success megacon oh yes i basically recommend that anybody if you have a chance at least go once it's, it's awesome what do you think about mtac because mtac is coming up and uh, i'm thinking about getting everybody together of course we'd have to go out to the secret um electron magazine vacation spot and pry dark one's hands off of his uh <laughs> Latest uh, rebuild of a ColecoVision. I must build. <laughs> must build. <laughs> and haul him out to it. But you both have been to a MTAC. Of course, that's the Middle Tennessee Anime Convention, which has yes. been moved to a new location. They moved, They had to move it, and it's sold out, the hotels. Yeah. Completely yeah, sold they, out. So yeah. then they made arrangements with other hotels, and so I guess they're just going to take over the whole city, apparently. Yeah, the the convention, here's the, here's the issue. <laughs> When MTAC started, they, you know, it started off and it was pretty decent size. And then more and more people started going. And we're talking about like full families 
like all of them dressing up and going for the weekend. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's intense. And like, it keeps so you got growing. minivans, wait, you got minivans parked outside. You know how people put the little stickers, you know, the mom and the dad mm-hmm. and the kids and the dog yeah. and the cat, and they have like characters. I saw one the other day, it was zombies, <laughs> Dragon Ball Z characters or something like that, yeah. down to oh, the yeah. cat. And you got the Dragon Ball Z cat. Kakarot! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but uh, see, I have not gone. I think that I should go to one of these. And, oh, you will uh, enjoy it. Yeah, and, and get because there's some very interesting guests there, celebrity guests, mainly they're voice actors from uh, very major uh, anime projects, shows, movies, and everything that are going to be there. Quite a few of them this time. So they also have something about uh, equipment that has to do with the letter S and the letter M. <laughs> They're requesting that people only show those in their hotel rooms or in their car and not <laughs> in the convention or the parking lot. So I'm thinking, okay, that, that, that's a lot more family friendly. Mm-hmm. Oh. But it's just really hilarious to me that they have to actually spell that out. And it makes me wonder... What happened at past conventions that made them have <laughs> yeah. to have this policy? Marvin the Martian was running around with a yeah, with a big but... big whip and, and some chains, I guess. I don't know. We hmm. must capture a live Earth creature canine and take him back with us to Mars. <laughs> Isn't that a lovely assignment? Hmm? Oh, God. Strong enough for us or not. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It brings a whole this new. This is chafing me. It is. <laughs> <laughs> brings a whole new meaning to the the aluminum Q thirty six explosive space modulator. What is that? <laughs> the aluminum Q thirty six explosive space modulator. Somebody has stolen my space modulator. Oh my! <laughs> oh man! So um, so we'll have to you know take a Conestoga wagon and get out there you know one year, all of Yay. us. Yay! <laughs> Swing down to uh, Orlando and pick up Meletius and make sure we don't hit any tree limbs. Yes, uh, no tree limbs. <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough of tree limbs. You bring a whole new meaning to sunroofs and cars. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the only way you can actually drive a car is with a sunroof and protective goggles. Yes. Can we tell our listeners exactly how tall you are? Uh, like 6'10". Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 6 foot 10 six inches. Ten. Yep. Yes. That's our Meletius. So. I'm, I'm very large. <laughs> I'm a very big person. And it's a great advantage, actually. But, of course, and like, like I suggested to you before, you get that every now and then. People look up at you and they go, hey, how's the weather up there? And, of course, I told you, all you do is you spit in their eye and you say, hey, it's raining. <laughs> Whenever someone says, I'm not book smart, but I'm street smart, all I hear is, I'm not real smart, but I'm imaginary smart. Thanks for joining us for The Electron Show, the program for the positively charged culture. Your host was Retro. Join us on the World Wide Web at www.electronmagazine.com. This is your announcer, Mystery inviting you to join us for each episode as we explore all things awesome. Copyright for The Electron Show and Electron Magazine is by our executive director and producer, Tony Rolo. All rights reserved.